maybe even getting up towards the 60 as that strengthens up, maybe even 70 as that strengthens up in the South Central and as it goes towards Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes, once again, strengthening back up again, maybe even bringing some 70s, maybe even some 80 miles per hour wind gusts. Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Let me give you the latest update on what's going on with the storm next week. It is growing and showing potential strength of hurricane force wind gusts coming with that. So I'm going to show you all the latest information in this video. Make sure you click the like button. Make sure you share this information to others and make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. I'm going to make it quick as possible as I can. Just give you the latest updates. You can see yesterday we had some wind damage. We had a lot of rain. We had some flooding reports as well. But we also had 10 landslides going across California. And this is where you're going to get that flooding for today. And you can see for today, you do have the marginal going all the way into Las Vegas, but you get a slight risk going all the way down California, even that moderate now going all the way into LA. So just be aware, it's more flooding for today. I know you already had a couple of days of it. This is your last day, then it's going to start milding down. Showing just in the next 24 hours, maybe another inch in Santa Clarita, maybe an inch in LA as it goes towards San Bernardino, maybe an inch. So it is bringing more rainfall to y'all, more flooding. Just be aware it will be over after today because this is still traveling towards Wednesday and Thursday towards the South Central, bringing you some hail with that as that goes out through the Northeast. And you still got that cold air that's coming down for the weekend. Then we're going to still be in that big warm up. And when that system comes next weekend, literally looking at eight days away, please take these results with a grain of salt. I will keep you updated. People are acting like this is set in stone and it's not. It's been shown in the latest information that it's not in that negative tilt until it goes a little further to the north. Then it gets towards that negative tilt on Thursday on the 29th at the end of February as you go literally into the last clicks of a 10 day run guys. So please take this with a grain of salt. The trend has been a Northern push. I think it's going to be a big wind event, some snow and some freezing rain that could be going into Canada, but we still got to watch for the Northern tier of the U S showing a lot of winds showing is strengthening up over here from the South central. Let's roll this right along. So as that piece of energy comes along for Wednesday, no tornadoes, no chances for the wind on that one. That one will be a little risk of hail. Showing it in your lightning strikes as you go into Wednesday night. You're going to start getting chances for large hail to come with that system as it comes through Kansas and Oklahoma into western Missouri as you go late night for Wednesday, then overnight hours. And then it's just regular lightning strikes, regular thunderstorms passing through. 55 dew points will bring thunderstorms, but I will not bring your severe weather with it. And you can see the latest from Weather Prediction Center from the latest meteorologist, Khabib, that this low pressure form up on the west coast is bringing these thunderstorms all the way until tomorrow morning, all the way till noontime. It's going to raise up for Washington, Oregon. Come across the four corners, bring rain, some snow and higher elevations. But as you go through Thursday, then it's going to form up in the south and go across the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes with some thunderstorms. And then as you go through Friday, going up on a very high ridge. But look at this next storm system so far coming in for next Monday, coming in from Canada, swinging through for Tuesday. And it's going to go right back up on Wednesday as well. And when you check with the control member of the ensembles of the Euro, you can see literally in eight days, that's why I said guys, it's still eight days away. It starts forming up. And once you go into nine days, then you got your chance for your surface low forming up, bringing some precipitation. And look how it goes on that very high ridge immediately into Canada from nine to 10 days and just gets out of here in a hurry. However, you see the tight isobars. This is bringing some strong winds to somebody. It's still too far away to know what is going on with the storm. It is literally still the last few runs with the Euro, but you can see it is starting to show hints that we may be getting two surface lows forming up, a big system just revolving around, bringing thunderstorms, and then consolidating to the second one, showing it will be stronger as that goes up on that higher ridge, bringing the snow, the colder air, this colder temperatures, this cold air aloft will strengthen the storm while it brings storms in front of it for the U.S. However, with the information we have now, you can see your dew points as you go into Monday 
And Tuesday, it really climbs up into your 50s way up here, bringing you thunderstorms. Now, over here in the 60s, where it gets really high with your dew points, that's where your chance for your severe weather is going to stretch, as we might get a couple of different surface loads. See how it's forming up here as well? It could be a hatched severe weather area just for a day on Tuesday as it goes back down towards the south with those high 60s. So these high 60s is what we need to watch for. It is the end of the run though, so this is far from being accurate just yet. But as we zoom in and take a look at the second storm, Wednesday on the 28th, showing the best chance for a strengthening storm. Forming up over here by the Great Lakes, and you can see your 50 dew points raising way up, bringing a lot of thunderstorms in this region. But the 60s are in the south. Now you can see what your temperatures. This is a lot of crazy temperatures, bringing 50s way up on one side, bringing 20s on the other side. So this is going to be a clash. The cold air loft is going to help strengthen this storm, and it is bringing cold wind chills just so you know for your information when the storm does come by. But it is going to help it strengthen, bring a lot of winds on the east side of it, and the storms going east, bringing the snow on a wraparound while that cold air comes in behind that. Also showing in the lightning strikes, it could be some hail involved with that. Not showing a lot of chances, but it is somewhere around the 28th. Now, once again, other than that storm that we have on Wednesday for severe weather, there's nothing for the next eight days. This will update. There is going to be something coming out for this. So far, showing on SIPs, there's a chance for a wide area to get a chance for severe weather, but mostly hatched for eastern Oklahoma, northeastern Texas, western Arkansas, and southwestern Missouri. Maybe that's going to be a hatched area for that stronger storm that's coming. I'm showing maybe even hurricane winds coming with that as that strengthens up because you can see that it's also showing on gfs chances for double vortices to pop up creating storms on the northern side and storms on the southern side perhaps bringing a lot of winds with that as that forms up on tuesday and goes towards the great lakes on wednesday perhaps bringing storms with that as well both GFS and Euro is showing a strong storm forming and both showing double vortices popping up. So this could start over here around the four corners in the south central and go up towards the Great Lakes. Very strong storm. Now you can see with your wind gust that potentially bring it up to the 40, the 50, maybe even getting up towards the 60 as that strengthens up, maybe even 70 as that strengthens up in the south central and as it goes towards Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes, once again, strengthening back up again, maybe even bringing some 70s, maybe even some 80 miles per hour wind gusts as that strengthens up. So just be aware it's showing Tuesday into Wednesday a strong system forming. Let's go through the winds first. Euro is showing that's going to dive in with that 40, that 50, that 60 miles per hour wind gust, only in the higher elevations on the 60s. But you can see how it's 40 and 50 coming with that as it comes across the South Central, also as it comes up towards the Great Lakes. Look, bringing 40s, bringing the 50s, and bringing 40s and 50s all the way towards the coast. Now, when you go by GFS, we all know GFS overdoes it a little bit. Look at the balloon data run, a 0Z, showing both low pressure right here, low pressure right here, bringing a lot of strong winds with that. I'm not going to go through that. The update shows it did mile down just a little bit, but not a whole bunch. Bringing a lot of winds, 50s and 60s, maybe even bringing those 70s with it as it comes across. Look at the strengthening. And this was a downgrade. It was showing it a lot worse. Showing still bringing a lot of snowfall towards Idaho, western Montana, higher elevations of Washington, Oregon, California, Utah, Nevada, Wyoming, western Wyoming, Colorado. And look over here for the central plains, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, bringing everybody about a, a little swath of an inch. But it's not going to stay. You might see it come down, but it's going to melt immediately. Now, GFS has been seeing that high ridge bringing a lot of snow potentially into Canada, maybe even bringing feet into Canada, showing maybe a lot of snow coming with that, a little more than what the Euro showing. The update showing some kind of snow coming behind that on the wraparound. The Euro also is picking up on that freezing rain transition. So I think maybe a little bit of Michigan, intercoastal northeast needs to be aware of this. 
definitely for Canada. When you look at GFS, it's showing a lot lighter. It might even swing into the northern half of New England. But we still got this cold air coming in as we go past the first week of March. It's not coming in immediately. After the first week, it's going to dip in and then dip back out at the end of March, the very beginning of April. Showing you still got the cold air coming in for Saturday, also for Sunday with this cold temperatures. Then we're going to be on that big warm up. Then as that next system comes in for Tuesday, a big warm up coming in. Look at this. You're getting all the way into the 80s, even into the 90s for northern Mexico as that comes in for Tuesday. And then it comes down with that cold air right behind as you get that storm, as you get the warm temperatures, the cold temperatures, and literally the end of the run. However, GFS is showing it is going to bring that cold front on down with that Tuesday all the way until Wednesday. And then that's going to move to the east for Thursday and Friday. Then you got to go past 10 days. Now you got the beginning of March, and it looks like we're going to be on a nice warm up. But beware, this is bringing a lot of wind chills. So as we go through Tuesday, very warm temperatures, a lot of heat indices all the way to the south, but very cold wind chills coming down on the west side of this system. As you go through Wednesday, look at this, Wednesday morning, then the highs for Wednesday with your wind chills is going to feel like negative temperatures for your highs for Wednesday as this moves to the east. And that is the latest information on what's going on with this storm, everybody. Potentially spreading and doing more of impactful damage to the area. Maybe getting two vortices, two areas of severe weather we're going to need to watch for. So that's new information. Make sure you hit the like button on your way out. Thank you for your time, everybody. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Now, before you go, Psalm 6, 1 through 5. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger. Neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave who shall give thee thanks? Amen. Have a great day, everybody. This is still next week. I will keep you updated. The latest trend on the cold air is further and further to the north. I will keep you updated on that as well. And once again, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh, the one and only true God that is out there. So make sure you say it by his name. Otherwise, you're saying it in vain. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody.